It's election year in Germany and there has been a lot of discussion about it. Following the Brexit referendum in the UK, Donald Trump's success in the US presidential elections and the apparent rise of the National Front in France, there's talk of a wave of populism sweeping across the Western world. Apparently, a lot of people are either worried or hopeful that the right-wing Alternative für Deutschland, with its robust views on immigration, might win. Well, predicting the future is a mug's game, but let me begin by explaining how the German system works. It's nothing like the system in the US with its three branches of government kept strictly separate, and the German Chancellor is not directly elected. Germany has a European parliamentary system, not an American presidential system. It is a bicameral system, which means that there are two chambers. There's the Federal Council, which is made up of some of the members of the 16 state assemblies, and the Bundestag, or Federal Diet, which is the chamber elected by the people. There is also the head of government, the chancellor, and the head of state, the president. The president has mostly ceremonial duties and is also not directly elected, but he can refuse to sign into law any bill if he thinks it's unconstitutional or if proper parliamentary procedure was not observed. That's quite a powerful veto, but it is very rarely used. It's the Bundestag that's being elected and therefore indirectly also the Chancellor. Traditionally, the main parties are the CSU in Bavaria and the CDU in the rest of Germany, which together make up the so-called Union, the SPD and the FDP. There are also several smaller parties, including the AFD. Germany is divided into 299 constituencies. Each voter gets a ballot paper with local candidates on one side and political parties on the other. So everybody gets to vote for one candidate and one party list. In each constituency, the candidate with the most votes is directly elected to the Bundestag. If that's where the story ended, then it would be a simple first-past-the-post system such as exists in, for example, the UK. But that could lead to inconsistencies. For example, at the last election in 2013, union candidates got 45% of the vote, but won 79% of the constituencies, which would give them a massive majority. So next, the party list votes are counted and extra members are added to the directly elected members until the proportions are right. That way, you get the advantage of first past the post, members representing the interests of local constituencies, and the advantage of proportional representation, a government that accurately reflects the way people voted. But not all parties can have these top-up members because otherwise you'd end up with a vast assembly of potentially thousands of members. To be eligible for these extra members, your party has to either win three seats or get 5% of the national vote. That's how the FDP crashed out in 2013. Normally one of the bigger parties, they failed to win a single constituency and only got 4.8% of the vote. If a party wins at least 50% of the votes, they can form the next government with all the other parties in opposition. But this pretty much never happens, and so then the race is on to form a coalition. For example, here's a recent opinion poll showing the SPD and the Union on 30% each. If this were an election result, they could form a coalition with 60%. But if they can't agree on the terms of the coalition, then instead the SPD might, for example, form a coalition with the left, the Greens and the FDP to get 52%. After the election, the president suggests a candidate for the post of chancellor. In theory, this could be almost any German citizen over the age of 18 years, but in practice will normally be the leader of the largest party in the governing coalition. The Bundestag then votes, and if at least half the members agree, which so far has always been the case, then that person becomes the new chancellor. If not, then the Bundestag must make a suggestion, then they vote on it. If that doesn't work, then there's another vote, and if that doesn't work, then the president has to step in and sort it all out. So how likely is it that Angela Merkel will be replaced by somebody from the AFD? I can't actually see into the future, but I have to say, not at all. If opinion polls are anything to go by, the AFD is nowhere near getting 50% of the vote. They have cleared the 5% barrier, so it's very likely that they will for the first time ever be represented in the Bundestag, but there's a long way to go before they can get half the electorate voting for them. The other option would be to form part of a governing coalition. The only problem with that is that, at the moment, none of the other parties would want to work with the AFD. In short, I think the AFD will be in the Bundestag, but in opposition, not in government. 
thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not send me a postcard? Here's the address. Or visit rubos.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my blog.